had <coughs> had to switch my other phone, so hopefully this is my last time doing this tonight. So I'm gonna talk real quick. Uh, yeah, like I was saying, like uh, you think about them, they wasn't like a pasturist, past, pastoralist uh, civilization merely. You know what I mean? They and they lasted for at least 400 years. Again, on the opposite side of the map in East Africa. You know, uh, contemporaries to the Malians. You know, the Malian Empire, for example, started in 1235 under Sunni Yadakita. Even really before that, it's just as far as like when it became an uh, empire, it was in 1235. <coughs> now, <coughs> I know the history thoroughly all the way up to Mansa Musa, but I'm not going to go through that whole history again because it'll take too long. But as far as like the kingship and the different masses, you think about it like Sunday Yadakita, for example. 1235 for all the way up to what 1255 20 years and then his first biological son Wali after him reigning for 15 years from 1255 to 1270 and then his brother Wadi from 1270 to 1274 and then their other brother the second adopted child adopted child by Sunday Yadakita which was a Khalifa who became Mansa for a year before he was uh, executed <laughs> due to the uh the, you know the laws of the constitution him being a tyrant and depriving people of their life and then finally Sunday Yadakita's brother himself who was his uh blood also uh Abu Bakar you know reigning for about 10 years from 1275 to 1285 and then after him uh <coughs> Mansa Sakura who was also initially adopted or whatever but you know he reigned for about what 15 years 1285 to 1300 and then after him Mansa Gayo from 1300 to 1305 and then his son Mansa Muhammad from 1305 to 1310 and then um, that's when Abu Bakar II the person that made the famous uh, you know attempt of an expedition to here to the Americas and died at sea so he only reigned for about a year or whatnot and then after him Mansa Musa or oh, 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 whatnot, you know, who made the famous pilgrimage. I'm not finna going through through all of that because it'll take too long. But the whole thing is, as far as like him, when you think about it, the Malians definitely were one of the most richest empires in history. And, you know, considering the expenditure of gold, the large excess ex expenditures of gold during his trip as far as Mansa Musa, you know, he was only like the third Malian king that was documented or purported to have made a trip to Mecca. He wasn't the only one. Two Malian mansions went to Mecca before him. Mansa Sakura, the guy that I mentioned that reigned from uh, 1285 to 1300. Then before Mansa Sakura, uh, Sunday Yadakita's actual biological son himself, Mansa Wali made the pilgrimage to Mecca. So my point in bringing that up is that if Mansa Musa was that rich, that means all the fucking Mansas were. Their whole entire empire was rich. It's just that Mansa Musa is heavily documented to have made this journey and decided to spend a great deal of their wealth. So going all the way back as far as like 1270, when Wally made his journey, he was just as rich as Mansa Musa. He just didn't make any type of gold expenditures because he didn't accidentally kill his mom, so he wasn't trying to repent. That's just the Malians. And then you go back before the Malians, you talk about the Ghanaians, you know what I'm saying? The Ghanaian Empire, it's a guy named, and I read this when I was in Memphis, Tennessee in 27, I, 2017. I actually read the whole entire passage about Ghanaian, the Ghanaian history. He had a book called, this guy Al Bakar, he had a book called uh, Book of Routes and Rams, and he published it in 1068. That very same year, during that same time, the king of the, of the, the Ghanaian king <coughs> of uh, Wagadulu, as it used to be called, his name was Tonka Menon at the time. You know what I mean? And based on what I could recall from this description, you know, uh, Al Gaba was the town where the king, the Ghanaian king, lived at or whatever it was another town that was a part of uh kumbai saleh 
<coughs> which is where Al Gaba was housed at. The other town was more so Islamic or whatever, because they did have a dual re religious practice going on at the time, and, and Islam was included in that. The whole point is, as far as this book description, I mean, the uh, book of R Routes and Rams by Al Bakar. I remember him mentioning that as far as their army, they had like 250,000 in their army that possessed arrows and bows. You get what I'm saying? The Ghanians wasn't destroyed until 1076 when they got into it with the Almoravid Confederation, who had just recently started before that in 1054 from a guy named um, Abdallah al Yasin or whatnot. You know what I mean? When they finally wiped, wiped the uh, Ghanians off the map in 10. 76 and destroyed that town Al Gaba that you can't find the history at all so uh, I mean it's a lot of history then you think about like okay I ain't gonna go too deep on this because this is for a future blog that I'm saving but I'm gonna go ahead and mention it like arrows and bows for example right as I mentioned before a lot of the oldest arrows and bows come from Europe Scandinavia but as far as on the continent of Africa itself even though I highlighted this before when I was talking about like the, some of the oldest places in the world that got arrows and bows outside of Egypt. And I also mentioned the Ghanaians, and I mentioned the reference by, uh, from Al Bakari, because I was writing on somebody else's post a long time ago. But anyway, here's another place, Zambia. You know, the oldest arrow and bow found there, you know how old them shits is? 12,000 years, 12,000 years ago, all right? And the invention of an arrow and bow is very significant because it's not a biological necessity. So that's an example of cultural influence. Again, hints, hinting at a lot of lost history, but I ain't going to get veer too much off this because I do not want my phone to cut off and I want to get through this. The final thing that I'm going to mention is in West Africa itself. Now, I found out about this about like five years ago, five, six years ago. And when I read about it, I was so fucking intrigued, but I was happy at the same time. Now, in West Africa, in Mauritania, right, there's like four major old settlements, the oldest on the fucking coast of West Africa. Them shits go back to 4500 B.C., 6,000 years ago, almost 7,000 years ago. These were stone settlements, four major locations. One was called uh, Dar Tachit or Tachich. So it would be D-H-A-R and then T-I, well, D-H-A-R hyphen T-I-C-H-I-T-T. -T. Another one was called Dar Walata. Another one called Dar Nema, N-E-M-A. And then the last one was called Dar Tagat. Now, as far as Dar to teach, <coughs> that was the older settlement. And that was supposed to have been on a high plateau. But as far as like the rest of the, uh, the other three main ones, <coughs> they pretty much had the same description. But Dar to teach was the oldest one. And based on archaeology and what I read, they were saying like some of these places had paved street streets or whatever. These were, you know, they had huge uh, stones and, and blocks and <clears throat> they had organizations they had little places and buildings for like granaries and and livestock and all this type of stuff so based on the description because i want to do a vlog about them in the future because i think it's so significant it's almost like they were almost like an empire i would argue possibly and as far as like a dart to teach you know the the earliest abandoned abandonment of that site it's only like 2300 BC. The rest of the other three sites that I named, they were occupied up until like 500 BC. And as far as, again, some of the architectural designs, uh, they're similar to that of Kumbai Saleh. All right, remember, that was the capital of the Ghanaians back then. So as far as uh, West Africa, that's significant because Egypt, I do know this, and I rechecked it yesterday. The oldest fucking pyramid in Egypt, the Step Pyramid in Saqqara, goes back to 6, 2650 B.C. All right. Now, Pharaoh, Kufu, Pharaoh, Pharaoh Khufu's son, his name was uh, Pharaoh Khafre. He reigned from 2558 to 2532 B.C. So about 26 years. He's the first Pharaoh... Where, me where megalithic structures were built after him. Now, if you think about this period and you compare them to that site in West Africa,